Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be doing a major tropical update now on Major Hurricane Laura. Hurricane Laura is now a major hurricane with sustained winds now of 125 miles per hour and pressure is down to 956 millibars. It's moving northwest at 16 miles per hour. This storm has really rapidly intensified, especially overnight this uh, yes, last night. It went from at around the 11 p.m. advisory being at around a 90 mile per hour category one hurricane to um, I, uh, I woke up with my friend this morning um, and at 8 a.m. the advisory uh, came out. It was officially, Laura officially became a major hurricane, 150 miles per hour. 11 a.m. advisory jumped up to 125 miles per hour. And I do think it's very likely that the next advisory at 2 p.m., which will be coming out quite soon, will have Laura become an official category four hurricane with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. Now, here's the current forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center, and you can see that Laura is forecast to stay a major hurricane up until landfall, hit pretty much right around the, exactly right along the Texas-Louisiana border, and then start going inland and weakening kind of rapidly, but still uh, uh, maintaining kind of hurricane strength up until it enters Arkansas. So that's pretty damn far inland. It's crazy. And then it will continue and then curve to continue towards the north and then curve and go directly to the east because it will start to entangle with this um, jet stream that ha will have a lot more shear with it. So it will start to really weaken, it, weaken the storm even faster. And then it will head off farther east, go through the mid-Atlantic and then off the mid-Atlantic coast into the Atlantic Ocean and become a post-tropical system and most likely dissipate. It could actually bring its remnants, could bring um, some gusty showers and wind to the Mid-Atlantic um, and the coast, coastal New England even as we head towards um, the weekend. So uh, that'll be quite interesting. But um, the main, the main um, problem, the main part of the system that really makes the system truly disastrous is the storm surge. With the um, 11 a.m. advisory making the storm uh, 125 mile per hour category 3 hurricane, they bumped up the storm surge forecast to 15 to 20 feet of storm surge hitting the southwestern Louisiana coastline going into the Lake Charles area. On top of that, we will see rainfall amounts as high as between 6 to 10, even some very coastal areas could be isolated areas of between 10 to 15 inches of rainfall so this is um this is very very serious lots of areas will be completely submerged underwater especially between the houston galveston area and um lafayette louisiana pretty much really i think lake charles louisiana that area will feel the true worst of the system with the eye wall and i just i think it could it, the, the eye wall and eye itself could go right over lake charles or could just go to the west and still clip lake charles with over 100 to 125 mile per hour wind speed so it's going to be a very very powerful storm um, and this is actually the first time I, this strong of a system being a Cat 4, Cat 5 hurricane, um, this kind of travel system at this strength would make landfall in the U.S. coastline in this area of around the Texas-Louisiana border. Um, so that'll be very, very fascinating. And um, this will, this will be definitely, definitely this is going to be, this is already one for the record books and it will definitely be one for the record books once it makes landfall and, all hell breaks loose with all that water destruction. Now, the arrival time of tropical storm force winds. Pretty much, it's it's pretty much uh, will be arriving around um, later t uh, around uh, later this afternoon into this evening for um, coastal Texas, coastal Louisiana. Pretty much as we head into the middle to later afternoon, early evening hours, tropical storm force winds will arrive for the um, coastal Texas, coastal Louisiana areas so um, the winds will really start to kick up um, to travel storm force strength quite soon and then the hurricane force strength winds will start to kick up as it as the eye gets closer to landfall later on tonight um, and then i think it will officially the storm will officially make landfall later tonight while we're sleeping just after midnight so um, this will be an overnight landfall which could be even more disastrous if a lot of people decide to stay home um, and hunker down for the storm because that will be that that flooding especially will really intrude their homes without them potentially even knowing it so 
that's a very very dangerous situation right there you can see wind speed probability is pretty much a hundred percent because we know where it's going to make landfall and at least the tropical storm force wind probabilities we're definitely getting that in the coastal texas coastal louisiana area even stretching the 100 up to 100 percent chance of tropical storm force wind stretches up stretches up all the way into northern west northwestern louisiana almost to the uh, Louisiana Arkansas border so that's a uh, very very interesting the uh, 58 mile per hour wind speed probability is also up to a hundred percent chance um, with that in that same area as the tropical storm force wind probabilities the hurricane wind speed probabilities also um, up to a hundred percent chance especially at the very pretty much right along the coast of that um, border of Texas and Louisiana even stretching up a little farther inland but um, still it's uh, pretty much definite of course at this point with how strong the system is that we're going to be getting some very very strong winds so if you haven't prepared yet that's it's really too late you just got to hunker down if you haven't evacuated yet you're just gonna have to stay put um because it's too late um the storm will the storm's way too close for you to be able to evacuate in time now let me show you what the hurricane looks like on the satellite imagery because it is just beautiful the eye um for the storm just it's just beautiful it's uh truly truly beautiful uh, we gotta let this load in uh tropical tidbits is uh being used a ton especially now with this storm being as strong as it is and how impactful it will be so you know it's a very very um dire situation for a lot of areas um so i gotta really let this load in man this is gonna take a while um but you can see from what uh, the images that do come in, you can see that eye is really trying to form. And um, at this point, the eye is really trying to look really symmetric and really well-rounded. So um, that is definitely also a sign that the storm is continuing to intensify and could peak um, at uh, towards a high in Cat 4. I think um, the current forecast on the National Hurricane Center has it peaking at 145 miles per hour. I think it could exceed that even as well. It could get to potentially, for me, I think it could peak anywhere between 150, 155 miles per hour. So just short of the Category 5 status, but uh, still, um, even if it makes landfall, um, let's say as a 125 mile per hour Category 3 hurricane doesn't even make to Category 4 status somehow, it will still bring that extremely powerful and disastrous storm surge flooding and fresh, fresh water flooding and all those strong winds. So it will still be a disastrous situation even if it's not a, it doesn't become a Category 4 hurricane, but it most likely will, most definitely will um, within the next advisory or two. So um, definitely, definitely um very uh, disastrous situation. Yeah, as you can see um, now that uh, you can see that eye is really coming in, really forming in there. And um, as it starts to be attain Category 4 status, I think the eye will start to look a lot more kind of textbook, try to look a bit more textbook. Um, so, you know, um, of course, the most textbook eyes in um, really strong hurricanes, it's not until you get to those really strong Category 5 hurricanes like um, the eye of Hurricane Dorian or Irma's eye, you know, those are the best textbook looking eyes. Um, but you can see the um, eye right now for Hurricane Laura is really trying to form here, really coming in nice with all that strong convection still continuing to blow up very consistently around the center. Um, so the uh, this storm is really looking like a beast. It's uh, very, very troubling. Um, now, let's look at the forecast models. And let me um, zoom this into the Western Atlantic. Um, because this is a, that's the closest, really, we'll be able to zoom into this storm. Let me zoom this in there. Uh, there we go. Um, and there's the storm. The GFS has not making landfall. Um, this is actually underdoing it because it's already at 956 millibars. It's probably going to be even lower. Um, the, it's probably its lowest pressure, I'm going to say, um, when it makes landfall. will probably be somewhere between 940 and 950 millibars. So um, that's going to be a very, very powerful system. Um, you know, so... Uh, it's, uh, that's going to be a very, very scary situation for those who do stay or aren't, weren't able to evacuate or chose not to evacuate and are staying in their homes during the storm. It's really going to sound like a very, very fast and very powerful freight train's coming through. It's going to be very, <laughs> it's just going to be extremely, extremely chaotic, honestly. Um, oh, I really, I really actually, I want, I do want to show um, what the HWRF and HMAR are showing because they, both of the HWRF and HMAR models are showing really, really, um, have been really showing a, a very um, consistent.
trend of the storm becoming very powerful and it's honestly they show it to the most truth that um how strong it can get you can see making landfall of 944 millibars definitely could happen and then it um, continues inland continues and continues to drop that very very heavy rain and strong winds even so you know that's uh very very problematic and for a lot of areas that's going to be um very troubling very um disastrous here's the hmon with the hmon showing you can see 944 millibars oh man we gotta let this load in um you can see 943 millibars 941 millibars even so maybe even a slightly stronger system uh, making landfall that would be very very interesting um you can see uh 940 millibars so it could make landfall at um any uh, could maybe closer towards nine, 940 millibars which would be very 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 fascinating um and you can see both models show it making landfall right near the texas louisiana border maybe closer more towards on the louisiana side um but uh you know we'll still have to watch it could still make landfall more towards the texas side um so that'll be something still we're gonna have to really watch and see um what uh what will happen with it now uh let me show you why honestly um laura has been able to intensify as much and as, as um quickly as it has the la nina has been continuing to form it's uh it's already in la nina territory and i think we will officially be in a true la nina enzo phase by the time we get especially more towards the middle to latter part of september um, so we still got a little bit of time before we're officially into that La Nina stage, but you can see it's really forming nicely there. Um, very, very much cooler than normal um, season of temperatures all throughout. So that's um, that's very worrying, especially since La Nina, the La Nina Enzo phase is what really amps up the hurricane season activity. Um, here's the uh, North Atlantic. You can see the Gulf. The Gulf sea surface temperatures are the warmest, really, in the entire Atlantic Basin, um, with temperatures anywhere from 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. That's in the upper 80s in degrees Fahrenheit. In Fahrenheit, it's uh, around upper 80s to even around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, even low 90s, maybe in some spots. So, and Laura's tracking right through those areas as it's approaching its landfall. So, that's really helping it um, sustain itself and become even stronger as well. Um, now. Uh, let's go to the 2020 Atlantic Hurricane Season Wikipedia page, and we've had a total of 14 depressions, 13 total storms, 4 hurricanes, and our first official major hurricane, because Laura is now our first official major hurricane. 72 total fatalities so far this season, total damage is around uh, is just near $6 billion, and I gotta tell you, um, Laura could be another multi-billion dollar disaster, could be the most um, damaging, and it, it is already the deadliest hurricane of the season thus far, um, killing um, up towards, up around uh, 20, near um, 26 people, it's uh, killed 26 people so far, so um, you can see Marco as a category one, it was really amounted um, almost it became a 75 mile power category one, but then just totally fell apart right as it was making landfall because that wind shear originally was so strong there. So, um, but it could cause and da total damage. Maybe it'll cause maybe a few hundred million dollars in damage, but um, maybe not even that. Uh, maybe up to only a hundred million dollars in damage. But Laura, on the other hand, could cause um, up to. I mean, honestly, it could cause a few. A few, maybe a few tens of billion dollars, a few tens of billion dollars in damage. So, um, that's a uh, very, very, um, uh, crazy, very, um, disastrous. So, um, that's, uh, that's my update now of Hurricane Laura and, uh, what Laura has been up to really over the past day. It's been crazy tracking Laura, honestly. Um, hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. Hopefully you really found this helpful, especially for those living in southwestern coastal Louisiana and coastal Texas. Um, in those areas, so um, please make sure you are prepared in those areas. Hopefully you enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and if you're a first-time viewer and you like what you saw on my channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.